Hello everyone, it's Dr. Ryan here coming to you from my office with another review of a step one question. This one was sent to me by one of my Twitter followers from one of the more recent MBME exams. So let's get started. So the question states that a 60 year old man with diabetes, prior kidney stones, hyperlipidemia and hypokalemia requires diuretic therapy for hypertension. Thiazide and loop diuretics differ most markedly in which of the following parameters for this man. The answer choices are glucose tolerance, plasma lipid concentrations, plasma potassium concentration, plasma uric acid concentration, or urinary calcium excretion. So let me start by saying that I think this question is worded very poorly. It asks, thiazide and loop diuretics differ most markedly in which of the following parameters for this man? This is a very confusing sentence. What do they mean by differ most markedly? That's an odd term. It's kind of subjective and ambiguous. And I have a feeling this question was in circulation on step one exams, but it was pulled for poor performance because of its wording. You should know that some of the questions on MBME practice exams were previously in circulation, but they get pulled out when they're performing poorly. And I suspect that's the case for this question. But nevertheless, when you boil this question down, it's asking you what's the biggest difference of the answer choices between thiazide and loop diuretics. And that's actually a fair topic for a question. It's something you should know. So I made this slide up to remind you of the different ways that thiazide and loop diuretics work. So loop diuretics work on the thick ascending limb of Henle, on this channel that reabsorbs sodium, potassium, and chloride. Thiazide diuretics work in the distal tubule on a channel that reabsorbs sodium. So there are two huge differences between thiazides and loops that you should know for your board exams, other than the places where they work in the nephron. The first thing to know is that loop diuretics are very powerful. They produce a large increase in urine output, and for that reason, we really only use them in edematous states, things like heart failure and cirrhosis where patients are massively fluid overloaded. We like to use them in those states because they produce so much urine output and mobilize so much fluid from the body into the urine. In contrast, thiazide diuretics are very weak diuretics. They don't produce a very large increase in urine output, and for that reason, their main use is in hypertension and a couple other niche areas but we rarely ever use thiazide diuretics for heart failure or cirrhosis because they just don't produce that much urine output. So that's the first major difference between loop diuretics and thiazides. It's the amount of urine output that they produce. And the reason they're different in that regard has to do with where they work in the nephron. This portion of the nephron right here is very important for reabsorbing sodium and water. This portion is less important. The second big difference between loop diuretics and thiazides has to do with calcium. So when you block this channel with a loop diuretic, more calcium is going to go out in the urine. You're going to lose calcium from the body. You'll get more in the urine and less in the serum. So loop diuretics lower serum calcium and increase urinary calcium. In contrast, this channel assists with pushing calcium into the urine. So when you block it, more calcium will stay in the blood in the serum and less will go out in the urine. Basically, it's the opposite effect of loop diuretics. So thiazides raise serum calcium and they lower urinary calcium. So these two differences in the powerfulness of the diuretic response and the calcium effects are the two biggest differences between loop diuretics and thiazides. So if we know that, we can go back to this question and look for an answer choice that has to do with either calcium or the amount of diuresis produced. And here we have answer choice E, urinary calcium excretion. This is definitely the biggest difference of those listed between thiazides and loop diuretics. Also, a thiazide diuretic would be very helpful for this patient because he has prior kidney stones. Like I said, when you take a thiazide diuretic, less calcium goes into the urine. And since calcium is a part of most kidney stones, this is a good thing for people who are frequently producing kidney stones. Okay, so now that we've answered that, let's look at the wrong answer choices and talk about them. So first of all, let's talk about answer choice D, plasma uric acid concentration. Well, you should know that all diuretics increase serum uric acid concentration and they can precipitate gout. So diuretics, either loop diuretics or thiazide diuretics are bad for patients who have gout and that's because they both have the same effect on uric acid. They raise the plasma uric acid concentration. So this does not represent a difference between the two drug classes. Both thiazide and loop diuretics also lower the plasma potassium concentration. They're famous for this effect. Many patients who take these drugs have to take potassium supplements so their potassium doesn't get low. So both drugs lower the plasma potassium concentration, so this is not a right answer. Now you may have been taught at some point in time that thiazide diuretics can raise the serum glucose, 
and they can also raise the serum lipid concentrations. What you probably weren't taught is that loop diuretics do this too. These effects are very minor. They're not important clinically. Lots of patients take thiazide and loop diuretics and their glucose doesn't get sky high and their lipids don't shoot up. But both drug classes have evidence that they can slightly raise the glucose and plasma lipid concentrations. So for that reason, these two answers are incorrect. Now I will tell you that the fact that loop diuretics increase glucose and increase lipid concentrations is very rarely taught. I don't know why, but these effects are always emphasized for thiazide diuretics and not loop diuretics. It's probably historical because thiazide diuretics were the first diuretics on the market in the 1950s. Loop diuretics came out later. But nevertheless, a lot of students are going to know that thiazides raise glucose and raise lipids, and they're going to think that loop diuretics don't do that, so they're going to choose one of these two answers. And this is another reason why I think this is somewhat of a poorly worded question, because these two effects, the effects on glucose and lipid concentrations, are minor and not important, and I don't think it's really fair to emphasize that students should know that. So the combination of the poorly worded question plus these two answer choices here make me think that this is a bad question that was pulled from circulation because it wasn't performing well. But nevertheless, you should know that one of the biggest differences between the effects of loop diuretics and thiazides is the effect on calcium excretion. They have opposite effects on calcium excretion, and that's a super high yield thing to know. So I'll just show you that the information you need to answer this question can be found in First Aid for the Boards. This is the section on loop diuretics. It tells you that these drugs work on the sodium chloride potassium pump. It tells you that they're used in edematous states. It does say that these drugs are used for hypertension. That's not really correct. These drugs are almost never used for hypertension. That's because they produce so much urine output, they would dehydrate patients who have hypertension. They do, however, tell you that loop diuretics can be used for hypercalcemia, and that's true. That's because these drugs lower the serum calcium and push more calcium into the urine. And here's the first aid section on thiazide diuretics. It shows you that they work in the distal tubule, that they decrease calcium excretion, as we discussed. It tells you that they're used for hypertension. It mentions they can be used for heart failure, but I don't think that's correct. I've never seen these drugs used for heart failure. They just don't produce enough urine output. They also tell you that the adverse effects include hypercalcemia, which should make sense to you. We just talked about how these drugs cause more calcium to go into the plasma. But then they also mentioned that thiazide diuretics cause hyperglycemia, hyperlipidemia, and hyperuricemia. They even give you this handy mnemonic, hyperglouc. But what's not usually taught is that these same things can happen with loop diuretics, not the calcium effects, but the other effects, the effects on glucose, lipids, and uric acid, those can all also occur with loop diuretics. So what are the key takeaways from this question? Well, my first takeaway is that some questions are poorly worded, and so you can't beat up on yourself if you get them wrong. I'd love to tell you every question in the Boards and Beyond QBank is perfect, but that's not the case. We're constantly reviewing and updating them to get rid of the bad questions. And there are bad questions in MBME exams, bad questions on UWorld. So if you get a question wrong, it may have just been written poorly. Learn from it and move on and don't get too upset about it. The second takeaway is that it's super high yield to know that loop diuretics and thiazide diuretics differ markedly in their effects on calcium. That is definitely something that could come up in many board questions and you should be aware of it. And that concludes our review of another step one question.